Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Grow Wealthy Grooming Live. I am your host, River Lee. Um, I'm going to be a little cautious because uh, my ring light keeps falling. So I have this amazing halo effect. Um, it's pretty lovely, um, but it may fall on my head. This is a real possibility. So if you are new here, welcome to the chaos. If you have been here before, welcome back. So you know, for those of you guys that don't know me, again, my name is River Lee. And my main focus is that too many groomer, groomers own a job and not a business. At Savvy Groomer, we teach pet professionals how to make simple changes in their business so they can grow a business that is successful. At Savvy Groomer, we know you want to be the savvy pet professional with the business you can be proud of. In order to do that, you need to know how to manage your business so you can own a business and not just a job. The problem is you're lots of advice that doesn't actually make a difference, which makes you feel frustrated, overwhelmed, and like a failure. You've been putting in the effort, but don't have anything to show for it. We believe no one should have their dream fail. I understand. I had to learn a lot of my business knowledge the hard way or from outside the grooming industry. I use my expertise to work with clients internationally and have a proven track record. So let's go ahead and talk about this week's topic. Bum, bum, bum. This is one of our strategies for recovery since we're on the other side. Whoop, whoop. Shout out. Super exciting. We're like, hopefully gonna start, you know, doing whatever it is that we were doing now. So let's talk about stop carrying your business. So I try really hard not to be too judgmental guys. I know a lot of times you guys think I'm kind of a bully or I have really strong opinions, which I do. I have very strong opinions, but I also love my opinions challenged. A lot of times what happens is in a business, you guys own a job. You don't own a business. And part of you guys don't understand what the difference is. So I want to go through that really quickly. So a person that owns a business earns money, even though they're not currently working in the business, basically like an investment. So if I have an investment in a 401k, an investment in the stock market, not right now, but generally speaking, then what would happen is that you would have money in an account and that money would make you money. So the whole point of owning a business is that you're going to put money into something and it's going to make you money back. Now, the nice thing about a business versus the stock market or a 401k is that you have so much more control over the ability to either earn more money or to watch that money grow faster. Um, obviously, because you are putting your... Whoop, there it goes. Told you. One sec. See, this is how you know it's live. Because this is some real stuff here. Oh, boy. I'm telling you, like... Oh, it won't stay. So we're just going to do that. Stay. Sorry, guys. So, basically... Business makes you money, whether or not you're working in it. Now, if you do work in it, you're going to earn more money, which is great because that's what you ultimately want to do. There are very few people in the grooming industry that buy a grooming business to basically roll up and grab a paycheck. There, now, we generally hate the people that run our businesses. If you're an employee, you work for a business that, let's say, you know, the person's not a groomer and so they don't understand what we do, why we do things, and exactly why, you know, they're the kind of person that wants you to do five doodles in one day. So, and the reason why is because they don't understand our business and we don't like that. But the truth is they don't have to work as a groomer or as a bather or even as a receptionist to get money from the business because a business is an investment that pays you money. Now, a lot of you guys basically own a job. If you have to go into your business for it to survive, then you don't own a business. Now, you can absolutely have a business that needs you in the sense that, um, a perfect example would be, if you are the, the grooming salon manager, but are you being paid as a grooming salon manager on top of your salary, you know, I'm sorry, your owner's draw, or are you basically getting paid as the grooming salon manager and that's it? The reason I bring this up is because if you own a job and not a business, what you are ultimately doing is be owning a job. Uh, the example would be 
let's say if uh, you're a solo groomer, then obviously then you own a job. You own a job that not a business because you go in, you have to work in order for the business to function. Uh, a lot of you guys that are solopreneurs, same as like my business right now, if I am not grooming, I am not making money. And if I put someone in my position, I built my business in a way that they could make a livable wage working in my position. A lot of you guys have created a situation where there is no groomer who would ever do all of your jobs and there's no meat on the bone left when they step into that job. Why is this important? Because those of you guys that own salons or multiple grooming, uh, multiple groomer places, whether that's mobile, like I said, salon, house call, you have first started a business that where the client was ultimately relying upon you, whether it was your client, the, your, your expertise. Um, perfect example. I recently did a coaching call and basically what happened was the person was really, really amazing with large breed dogs. Really great. Not my cup of tea, but they're really great with large breed dogs. They're really great with cats. Um, and they're just a machine. They're just a power groomer. Again, I am not a power groomer. So when we did the math, we realized that paying herself 60%, she was earning the business more than her four employees because she had a receptionist, a bather, and two groomers. So the two groomers and the bather and the receptionist actually cost her more money than like basically after you took out their commission, which is 45%, taxes, overhead, there basically was nothing left. And so if she wasn't physically grooming, the business wasn't creating any income. So if you own a business that the only way it can survive is for you to be grooming full time, you own a job. You do not own a business. And so now is the perfect time for you to start making wise decisions. Um, a lot of you guys have laid people off or you furloughed them. A lot of you guys have to make drastic decisions in your business. So this is an opportunity for you to turn around and decide how do I want to run this business? How do I want to be able to deal with that? And there's no clear cut answer. And again, I always suggest you guys consider, you know, coming in for an hour coaching call, signing up for Grow Wealthy Grooming membership. There's lots of ways to get in touch with me because things are so nuanced. I can give you a blanket statement, but whether you're a mobile or house call or a salon based, if you are membership modeled, if you are doing one-on-one -on -one grooming, if you want to have 10 employees or you want to have two employees, whether you want to be grooming for the next 30 years or the next five years or in stop in the next year, these are all variables that will create different business scenarios. So I highly suggest you consider, um, you know, either hopping on a virtual coffee, which is a 30 minute get to know me, get to know how I could help you and how you need help. Or, you know, right now during COVID-19, we are offering an hourly rate for our coaching calls and we're more than happy to help you guys that way. And always our Grow Wealthy Grooming membership, you get to learn bite-sized things about your business. Now, these are not necessarily specific things about your business. However, if you go to our Facebook group, which you will be automatically become a member of when you sign up for our only $10 a month right now membership, then you can ask specific things in the group and either the group can help support you or I can always hop on a live and give you a little bit more one-on-one -on -one that way. So that aside, you know, what should someone do if they realize they are financially carrying their business? They need to make some real decisions there. Is it the fact that you have really shitty employees? And sometimes that's the truth. Sometimes you guys have these terrible employees who use these key phrases. A key phrase is, my, the owner is taking half my money. That is a toxic groomer who thinks that you, who put all your money in this investment and is probably not really earning more than what they could make working at Petco um, or another high-end grooming salon, honestly, you know, and taking on all this risk is taking half of their money. Um, if that, if you're a groomer saying that, there's not much you can do with that person. That person is probably going to have to be let go. That person, you cannot convince somebody who is that entitled that you deserve to make the money you make because you probably put 10, 30, 50, $100,000 into this business and you've put hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of hours unpaid into this business to grow it. 
Um, they feel like they showed up. They got a set of scissors and clippers uh, and groomed a dog that you told them to groom. And all of a sudden they think they deserve to own that client and own that money. And that's wrong. You can't fix somebody like that. Somebody like that has to go own their own business and go through the hardships or go work for somebody who's really shitty, who's going to treat them like crap and then realize how good they've got it. You know, it's kind of like the kid. Uh, the best example I have is when my brother first moved out and he moved out when he was older. He was like 30 years old when he moved out. And he goes, Rever. And I go, yeah. He goes, do you know how much food costs? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I do. Because at the time I moved out when I was 16. So I'd been out for 10 years. And it was so funny because for the first time in his life, he re- he appreciated my mom buying him food because she had always purchased food. He might have bought like a box of cereal, maybe a gallon of milk when they were running low. But he just got used to being a fridge being full all the time. And so why do I bring that up? I bring that up because if you have somebody like that, you're going to work yourself to the bone to give them a paycheck. So if you financially figure out that without you, the business cannot run, what are the key things you have to figure out? Is it your payroll? If all of your payroll is above 30%, it's probably that. It is probably that. Because anything, so if you do, we've talked about this many, many times. So if 30% is payroll, let's go low. Let's say 20% on taxes. Um, Where are my notes? See, this is why I have my notes. Because I want to make sure, because I was working on this earlier. And I have everything laid out. There we go. So in this scenario that I worked on, it was 30% went to payroll. Then it was actually 25 to taxes because they were in New England like I am. So that was 55%. Then they did another 15% towards their debt payments. Um, in this case, it was a grooming van payment. Um, they did 10% to overhead. So that would be a total of 25% in overhead, which is not uncommon if you guys have debt or if you're going to increase things like you need to update things and this is especially po- uh, possible if you guys have like a dryer or you know bathing systems or even if you want to upgrade to those things which I highly suggest I'm a big fan of work smarter not har- work smarter not harder so I'm a big fan of bathing systems and quality dryers and things like that um, and so that left them 20% that's great. 20% for the owner to get paid when they're not grooming or to put into savings or whatever it is that they would like to do. And I will say, I am hoping this is streaming. So if you guys are seeing this live, please, please, please go ahead and give me a quick little message in the comment box because I am having like post-traumatic sense. I'm like, I'm really hoping I'm not doing all of this and uh, nobody's here. It happened to me one time where I literally did the entire show and then I realized I didn't hit the right button. And like, it's one of those things like now it's like you have PTSD about. So feel free guys to go ahead and put a comment in the chat box if you see the show live. And in fact, I'm going to text one of my friends to make sure. Oh, Erin, thank you. Good. I'm like, oh God. Anyway, so then let's go back to these numbers if this person had paid 50%. Because remember, we used 30%, they had 20 left. So if they had paid 50%, how much would be left? Zero. You know, that's crazy. Now, a lot of times these people have been open for 30, 40 years, they don't have any debt, but they also haven't upgraded any of their business. Think about that. If you are not constantly upgrading, thank you guys for letting me know, I really appreciate it. Erin and Hannah Mae, I really appreciate it. I I just get nervous because with my luck, it's like the light and everything. I, um, you know, LRJ88 says, I see it. YouTube didn't tell me at first, but it is working. I know. I wish YouTube would be better at letting people know. I don't know, man. I, I wish there was a better, easier technology. What I really need to do is actually show exactly up at seven. That way you guys don't have to worry about it. I will get better. I am getting a more permanent office set up that I'm going to like basically screw into the walls and have a pull down. That is on my list of things to do. It is. I swear. I promise. But anyways, guys, going back to the numbers, I want you to think about this. If you had 50% for your groomer's pay, 
you know, 20, 25% taxes, which is not uncommon, guys. You know, especially if you have multiple groomers, you're looking at easily a 15 to 25% tax bracket between state and federal. And don't forget workers' comp and things like that. And you have to pay for your payroll and la, 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 la. And then in this scenario, we had 15% to debt. Now, for those of you guys that don't have debt, good for you. Um, <coughs> um, but most of us right now in our businesses have debt. Um, or we're going to spend that money upgrading things in our business. Like I said, there are a lot of groomers that have been open 20, 30, 40 years and everything is original. You know, if you go in there and you see like the, like, you know, they're, their stand dryers are so old, they're literally dinosaur dryers, you know? Uh, the dryer they have is like duct taped, like the hose is duct taped. Um, or, you know, they have like a DIY like bathing system that is just a death trap. Or they have like those ancient grooming kennels that now are like death traps because... You know, back then, if a dog, like, got its jaw caught on a, a stainless steel cage, no big deal. But now, I mean, they just look like, they look, they look terrible. They're not updated. Everything needs a fresh coat of paint. And they're probably still using cards instead of one, two, three pet or anything like that. Or they're in that grooming van that is, like, so old. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone, like, in a grooming van that is, if it was, if it was a regular car, it would be an antique. You know, and they just literally, they don't have the money. They don't have the money or the resources to upgrade that. So that's why I always say like 15% to debt slash upgrades. Because you're always going to be upgrading. You know, and then 10% to overhead. You're always going to need shampoo. And this is where, again, your quality comes in. You know, some of you guys can, I will, you know, there are groomers that will use Dawn forever because it's cheap. And I think that's wrong. So... You know, and you don't have to use, like, I use very expensive. Like, Chubbs is actually probably the cheapest shampoo I use. But, like, my other shampoos, like, I love Le Pooch. I love Show Season. They're easily 40 to, you know, $65 a gallon wholesale. I don't even know what they're retail, but I'm sure they're out of this world. But because of that, because they are higher, my overhead is going to be higher than 10%. Where in this person, their overhead was only around 10%. Um, and then you need money for savings. Again, right now, you guys, you should have had six months to a year. So why does this matter? I and mean, let, let me bring this right back to where we were. So what we were trying to bring this back to, or rather what I was trying to bring this back to, was the fact that if you, if you are right now the person creating the income for the grooming salon, then you have to acknowledge you currently own a job. Now, you can have a business that is basically a, a high paying job. You know, I have created my business. Now this is because of where I am in my life. This is because of where I am in my career that I do not want to expand. Now, have I considered expanding? Absolutely. Because where I am with Savvy Groom and everything, I'm either going to have to sell my business or I'm going to have to expand it and hire a minimum of two people. Because I'm a badass and they can't do what I do. Because that's the truth. If you're, if you're that like solopreneur, then guess what? What It's probably going to take two people to do what you do. They just, yeah, there's no, either they're not going to groom cats as fast as I can. Um, you know, what, even if they are, well, no, see if, if they're a CFMG, they'll be fine. But, you know, they're going to have to learn in this and that. So it's going to create time. And the truth is I work 10 times harder than anyone. Why? Because I'm a business owner. So if you're a business owner, you're going to work 10 times harder than your employees. Um, I love the quote. It's, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's basically, you know, you, you know, an entrepreneur can do, you know, three hours and 30 minutes or 30 minutes and three hours. That's just how we are. So when you're looking at your business, if you really are carrying the business and especially if this is against your employees, maybe you need to let your employees go and reevaluate your business. Or maybe if they come back, you need to Re, renegotiate their pay. And the truth is a lot of you guys took out loans to keep your business going. And the problem with that is now you have additional overhead for those loans. And those of you guys that aid in your savings, you need to increase those savings. 
So it's what happened, no matter what, everyone was affected. I really don't know anybody who stayed open the entire time, even if they only closed for a few weeks, um, or even if they weren't closed, maybe they were, they had a huge drop off in clientele, which I think we all did a little bit because we had older clients that needed to be safe or people that were nurses and firefighters who are working around the clocks or double or triple shifts. You know, we all were affected. So how are you going to make that money up? Because working yourself to death to keep a job open and, you know, keep your employees employed really isn't a good plan. So looking down deep into your business and trying to decide what the best options are is tough because this is where we really get into the nitty gritty of what it is that we want in our life. River, why would we do that? That seems really stupid. So if you're not already a member of Grow Wealthy Grooming, we are doing in May our vision boards. And this is incredibly important. I know it sounds really, you know, woo woo and BS and all that stuff. Um, and if you are a member right now, I actually hired a membership consultant and they're going to help me make my, my, I was originally doing guides, written guides, and I realized that you guys really enjoy video. So I'm going to work on creating May's guide into a video. So if you're seeing anything go on in the actual membership, hold on, let me get through that because it's going to be very important for me to help you guys create, you know, I know you guys are visual learners, which makes so much sense. And I want to be able to be easy to listen to content while your guys are on the road mobile grooming or while you're grooming dogs or cats. Anyway, so the reason something like a vision board is very important is simply put, you need to know what you really want. Had you asked me at 23 with a newborn baby in my arms what I wanted, I wanted a doggy daycare grooming boarding facility. That was, that was the dream. That was the dream. I wanted the giant, big, beautiful, multi-million dollar facility. But what I didn't take into account is what I wanted in my personal life. You know, and we always act like they're so disconnected. We have to realize, especially groomers, like our businesses are our soul. Like this is our heart and soul. Like we have our family, but we really get all of our needs met while we're grooming. We feel important. We feel loved. We feel appreciated. We feel fulfilled. We feel successful. We feel all of these wonderful things in our grooming salon. It's very hard, I found as a woman, to feel all these things at home. But because of that, I can often put the grooming business ahead of what ultimately I want in order to feel important. And that's really unhealthy. It just is. So what I would suggest you do is like, so I did my personal vision board and I was a dork and I showed it last week. I'm not going to grab it again because I will definitely drop my light. But what's on there? Friends and family on a boat. I live in Rhode Island. I don't want a boat right now, but I know I dream of being on the ocean regularly. Um, there is a, a, a couple holding hands on the beach at sunset. You know, I there's a picture of a wedding on near a lighthouse and um you know you guys know how I know I sound really really pathetic I'm like in my mid-30s I'm like and there's a, a uh they're holding a pregnant belly I really want more kids um not like in a weird like test tube baby way but more of a like I'm going to manifest this I'm going to find the love of my life and he's going to want to give me lots of babies or I'm going to have a shit ton more cats either way it's a win-win but yeah, so it's like friends on that. And there's some like, you know, stuff I really want that are materialistic. Things like granite countertops. And I want an Arabian horse. I want a black Arabian horse. I had an Arabian horse when I was younger. I sold my horse in order to, when I had my son. And I want another one. And I will have those things. And the more I look at that, I have to say, would that business model satisfy that? Are they compatible? Are those two dreams compatible? And they're not. And it's okay. Because at some point, that larger dream could be a reality. But where I am right now in my mid-30s as a single mom, if I want to own that multi-million dollar thing, then I'm going to have to put that other stuff on hold. And that stuff's more important to me. Because that's what I put on my vision board before I even really thought about it. That's what I put on there. Which means that that is really my heart's desire. And that is what I am dreaming about. 
Yes, my ego and my needing to be significant in my business life wants that big, beautiful, like, you know, hunter dog, doggy daycare. Although now, honestly, that I have really learned who I am and what I want, you know, I realized even when I owned my grooming salon with five employees, I realized as much as I loved that, I wanted more time with my family. And I didn't have to give up being a business owner. I just had to shift my business in a way that made sense. And I tell people, I go in the van, you know, not right now, but pick them up, you know, you know, drop them off at school and pick them up. And that's important to me, you know, and you know, that's, that's not a lifestyle. That's a lifestyle choice. And my business has to follow suit. And because of that, with my grooming salon, I should say my, you know, with my, so my grooming salon towards the end, I, they didn't need me there at all. Um, and that was very tough to let go of because yes, I, they needed me there because they needed a babysitter, which was honestly a lack of my knowledge at the time on how to create a culture of awesomeness and a culture of excellence. You know, I've learned a lot since then, which has been great. But when I opened my mobile, you know, I charge enough that if I need to take a day or two off, I'd make plenty of money. Um, and that's really the only financially successful way of doing that. So they are monthly clients at 100 to 200 dollars a pop. Um, right now in my business model in order for me to make the lifestyle amount of money I want to make, I would need to charge a dog 100 to 100 to 140 dollars a dog for a small dog. I wouldn't do big dogs. Only dogs are 20 pounds. You know, and I have coached people on how to do that. But it's a very specific niche. It's a very specific marketing and it's a very specific rumor. You know, that needs a lot of, you need to have a lot of control and you need to have a lot of your branding on point, you know. Um, Hannah May is saying, yes, just reopened and I'm very backed up getting clients in, booked until end of July. Have no employees currently. Well, Hannah May, let me ask you a question. Like, I don't know if you saw last week's where we talked about the tidal wave of employees. You know, are these all, I mean, are, did you increase your pricing? Did you go through your pricing and figure out how much you had to earn? You should base how much you take home. So let's say my, and I'll grab my calculator. If I need to take home $4,000 a month, so that's about where I am personally. If I need to take home $4,000 a month, let me do some math. Mm -hmm -hmm. Three by math. Yeah, see, this is the tough part. Because as I'm going through this amount of money, almost there. Yeah, so in order for someone, let's say, to bring home about $1,000 a month, I'm sorry, $1,000 a week, which is $4,000 a month, which is basically where it, it depends again how much you have overhead. So as an employee, they would have to gross about $13,500, which if that is if that is salon prices, they're not going to earn. And that's also why we don't have many groomers making livable wages. Because at 30%, which is the max they should be paid, they'd have to groom $13,000, $14,000 gross worth of dogs. It's a lot of dogs. It's a lot of dogs, you know, it's between $12,000 and $14,000 worth of pets. And if your prices are at $50, there's no hope. Uh, Hannah Mae is saying, yes, increase prices to $60 per small pet. Right. So Hannah, so let's even take that. So um, let's take the example of, let's say, eight pets a day times 60. It's $480. So point three that would be $144 a day. So if you were paying yourself as an employee, you would be grossing at eight dogs at $60 a small pet, $144 a day. Is that good money for where you live or is that basically minimum wage? And these are where we can start looking at that money. Now, a lot of us like, that's great, Hannah. I'm glad to hear that you went from 45 to 60. Um, and again, like a lot of times we pick numbers out of the air. You know, did you see 60 because you wanted to be 
Like, is it just because you wanted to increase it or is there some other reason? So for instance, a lot of people will say you need to increase your prices, but I always go, okay, what do we need to increase our prices for in order to make a livable wage and cover all the business and save money and do all of that? Sometimes y'all's businesses are so gunked up. There's, you got to just start from, you got to make major difference. You, just, you might have to work full time in your business and you might have to go work for another groomer because you have just accumulated so much debt. I remember somebody had like $300,000 worth of debt in their business. And I was like, whoa. And they were charging basically salon prices. And so I was like, "You're it's going to take you 25, 30 years to pay this off. And it was not a piece of property. It was just business loan and then payroll loans. And then they let their employees go. And so it was just kept rolling and racking up. It was insane. But we want to make sure that we're taking that into account. Again, so if we own a small business, you know, how much money would I earn? Again, you know, Petco PetSmart are always gonna overpay at 50 to 60%. Grooming salons are gonna get wise and start paying hourly, or they're gonna start paying 30% commission, one or the other. And the hourly is going to be based on what you can produce. So at best, at $60 a dog, we should be paying them about $18 for that dog. So if they're doing a small dog in an hour, that means $18 an hour. Some of you guys, that's great money. And some of you guys, it's terrible money. Where I am, that's okay money. That's not great money. Because if I did that times 40, times 52, that's $37,000 a year. I don't know about you guys, but you know, working for somebody for $37,000 a year doing this job would be very difficult for me. So, you know, that's, that's where we start getting. And the tough place is deciding how we're going to run our business. And again, this is where it's always easier to have a business coach, ideally on a package. I really, I will do an hour or two hours at a time, but I really like to do at least three, six or a year long package because it takes a lot to change a lot of these things because it's not only why should I increase my prices? How do I convince my clientele to do this? And is this price increase enough? I was working with someone recently and they had just increased their price from, I think it was like 65 or 70 to 80. But when we did the math, they had to charge a minimum of $110 per pet, ideally 130 in order to be doing less than 10 dogs a day six days a week and break even like you know to make to make get them a livable wage more than they would earn working for somebody else and that's where going through the the details of your business is so important you know the rule of thumb for those of you guys that are not going to hire a business coach or you're not ready to or you know you're too scared to sometimes a lot of guys are really scared to find out how if your business is even profitable. A lot of times your guys' businesses is not profitable. You know, you're making money, but the only reason you're making money is because you're embezzling in your business or you have no money saved up or you're working yourself to the bone. Um, you know, and again, when you want to go hire somebody, a lot of times you guys can't afford to hire somebody because, you know, if you treated your employee the way you've been treating yourself, they'd quit. You know, I remember when I first started the Green Paw Spa and I was working long hours and I would groom anything. It could be vicious or matted or giant. It didn't matter. I was going to groom it. And yeah, I mean, then when I hired people, they didn't want to groom my angry, constantly matted dogs. And I had to switch my business model because uh, nobody was really willing to do the crap job I was willing to do. And again, I went from a a place of desperation and that's why I was more willing to do those things. And I don't think most people should have to do those things or want to do those things, you know, or leave it to the, the youngins because it's like when I was, you know, 18 and I wanted to ride the crazy thoroughbred who would take off with me in my mid thirties. I'm like, nah, I'm all set. You know, when I see like a, an angry Scotty or a child, I'm like, no, I like my fingers. Thank you. Thank you. I like my fingers. You know, and we all have our Scotty or our German Shepherd or a Husky, whatever you don't like to groom. Cockers. Nah, you couldn't pay me enough to groom Cockers. But anyway, I digress. 
So this is where it comes down to. Are you carrying your business? If you were to hire somebody at 30%, could your business survive? Or is the only way your business is going to survive because you are willing to work yourself to the bone and basically earn what you would earn, you know, either embezzling your business or earning as much as you could when you were at another job. Um, a lot of you guys would actually earn more working for Petco PetSmart. Although now that I, the payroll system, I don't understand what they're doing. There's like a minimum and a maximum. Now I do think that there is money to be made at Petco PetSmart. Um, I also think that they're really stressful because you have to be a very specific kind of person who's willing to work there. Um, I really struggled because I don't like hypocrisy. I like if there's a policy, we stick to the policy. The policy, I don't like gray area policies. I don't like that at all. Um, that said, the reason I bring that up, and I want to be kind of clear, I'm trying not to, not trying to be depressing. If you are grooming, let's say, um, for easy math, you know, $10,000 a month gross. Then if you were had one groomer, that would be about $3,000 in payroll. You know, then you have $7,000 to pay taxes and, you know, to pay overhead and things like that. But if you are doing, again, let me see, times A times. So this example would be $2,400 a week, which is about, no, it's about 10000 I want to go a little lower than that. Let's say I am not a power groomer. Let's say, let's use the example of $50 per dog. And that's a Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu, five strip, nothing fancy. And they're doing five dogs a day. That's $250 a day. Now let's times that by five days a week. That's $1,250. And then we're going to also, you know, like $1,250. And then we're going to go ahead and times that by four. That's $5,000 a month. Now, in this grooming salon scenario, this is a groomer. Maybe you hired this person. Your shop prices are 50 bucks. They're going to groom five dogs a day, which I'm a five dog person. I'm a five or six dog person. I could not ever, I have, I have. I am at the point in my career, in my life, I don't want to do more than five. More than five, I have no more energy for my family. I have no more anything. So this is five dogs a day, five days a week at $50. It's a lot of fives, which means 5000 about $5,000 a month. I'm like, blah. So... If this was someone's grooming salon, they would pay their bills. Let's say, you know, their uh, rent was $1,000. Their taxes would be, let's call it $1,500. So that's $2,500. And then they're not going to worry about upgrading. You know, they're just going to put uh, their business debt on a personal credit card. And they're not going to add any savings. So they're not going to upgrade. They put their per, their uh, business debt on a credit card, personal card, and they have no savings. So they're going to take home $2,500, which would be 50%. Because they're like, oh, I would have made 50% at the grooming, another grooming salon. And then things like COVID happen, or there's a flood, and their grooming salon is closed for six months, um, which can happen, by the way, guys. If there are acts of God happen, tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, trees falling on properties, lightning striking... These things can take months and months and months and months and months for you to get back open. A lot of times it is, especially if it is an act of God, insurance is like, no, nah, that's not our fault. And then your landlord might say, it's not our fault. And then your insurance might say, we're not going to cover you for not working. Um, I was talking to them recently and they said, yeah, they don't, people don't realize that like if a tree falls, it depends if it's considered an act of God. No different than if you have to stop working due to, in my area, snow. And same thing with the virus. It's considered an act of God and it's not covered. So a lot of times it's not. And that's where you want to be specific or you can pay extra for it. A lot of times paying extra for it, you're better off just saving the money. But so this groomer would be like, I'm making great money. I'm making $2,500 a month. The problem is they're not putting any money. There's no extra money to put into the business to grow and do all that. So they're basically owning a job, right? Because realistically, at $50 a dog, five dogs a week, five dogs a day, 
Five days a week. Ah, 50%. They could go work. There are so many grooming salons right now that are willing for you to take advantage of them working at that price point. And they wouldn't have any of the additional hours because let's be truthful. This person is probably grooming. If they're like me, it would take me about eight hours to do five dogs. And that's small dogs because I'm lazy. And this is not me like going crazy. Like, can I do more? Yes. Can I do it faster? Yes. Do I want to? No. <laughs> this is why I'm mobile and I do cats because I have become the lazy, the savvy groomer has become the lazy groomer, the very entitled groomer. She's got her hair back. She's got, you know, I've got a caddy shack back. Like I am all about technology. Anything that can make it faster and easier and make me have to put less effort into grooming, I am on. You know, but at 25, uh, so 40 hours a week times four, it's 160 hours. So we're going to take that $2,500 and divide it again into 160. That's $16 an hour. Not even. 15 50 an hour. And that does not include marketing, phone calls, cleaning, and all of that. So you could also have the same groomer who is the owner who's grooming 10 dogs in the same day. And they're probably not taking that, if they have employees, you know, that other employee is probably just taking all of that money and the groomer who's the owner, because most of the time it's generally power groomers, is going to end up making up the difference. So if your employees are actually costing you money, which happens way more than you guys ever talk about, um, your, your employees aren't gravy. They're the business. Like you should be in the manager position or the receptionist position or moved on to basically the just picking up money position. And a lot of us like me, I don't know if I'd ever want to just be picking up the money position. I like to be in the day-to-day workings of my business, but my business would need to pay me a salary to do that because I need to make money just for owning a business. I don't know. This is kind of like, what? no I thought like I'm a groomer and I got paid for grooming but I own my own business it's kind of like those MLM lies like if you got like I sold Mary Kay and made a lot of money but most of these MLMs are basically lies right we know they're pyramid schemes and a lot of these grooming salons are basically the same here give me money so you own a business and go sell things right that's basically what we're doing we're paying money to own a job well then it's not a job it's either a hobby because it loses money, it costs us money, or it's a business because it makes us money. But you can, a lot of times, you could have just made more money working for somebody else. Some of you guys are so low hourly that you could actually make more money working at McDonald's or Amazon or insert terrible job here. But you could still make more doing it, which is horrendous. You could also get a nice office job if you that's your shtick. Be a dispatcher, you know, work. I don't know. I think if I wanted like a cushy job, it'd be like, I don't know. I don't actually know what would be a cushy job that I would actually enjoy. Maybe I'm just kind of broken. I like, I like jobs that are engaging and that are hard, eh, hard work, but like, I like mental work. I like physical work too, but Hmm. Let's think about that. But anyway, I don't want to go too far. If you guys have any questions, oh, Hannah just wrote, what if you're the only groomer of your business? Would a bather not make us money? I was thinking of hiring. What would hourly wage would you recommend to make a good profit? So again, guys, a lot of this stuff really comes down to the nuances of your business. So let's say for instance, you're a lot of times you're a receptionist and a bather may or may not make you extra money. Um, For instance, you know, in the example where I talked about the person who was carrying her business, her receptionist cost her about $150 a day and she did a lot of work, but she didn't receive that money back. So let's say if, um, I know, let's just use nice round easy numbers. So let's say $10 an hour for a bather. And let's say they're going to work for you five hours. So 10 times that's 50 bucks. Pretty simple. Obviously, it's going to be more between taxes, payroll, and workers' comp. Because a lot of you guys, if you're a solopreneur, are not paying workers' comp, are not paying Social Security, are not paying, well, we have TDI. 
whatever you guys have, like all of those things. So I would add at least 5%, whatever you're paying them to what they're going to cost you. So pretty easy. I would take 10 times 0 0.05. So I'm going to add an extra 50 cents per hour to my cost. So they're really going to cost me 1050 and I'm going to times that by uh, five hours a day. So 5250 times five days a week, 262 times four weeks. So they're going to cost me about $1,050. Again, all of my payroll has to be under 30%. How much money are they really going to earn me? Is that bather going to be doing new groom dogs? Are they going to be doing my groom dogs and bath dogs? Are my bath dogs high enough? A lot of you guys will hire a $10 an hour bather, but then your lab baths are like $35 or your small dog bath that take an hour, you know, are being charged $35 an hour. You want to keep that payroll under 30%. So if they are an hourly bather, what are you expecting them to groom realistically? As far as I should say bathe, bathe, blow dry, nail clipping, all that. How much are they expected to produce? And does that add to your bottom line really? Or is it just for you to do more dogs? Again, if your goal is to hire a bather in order for you to do more dogs, that's a great option. But is it really growing your business? Is this someone you're going to hire to then train to groom? Um, I think hiring a bather or a VA, a lot of you guys never talk about hiring a virtual assistant or really streamlining your business. That honestly makes you way more money, way more money. You know, like you guys are, it's so funny because I'll be like, you need to invest in this software, like online booking, um, creating, streamlining your online situation as far as, um, you know, cause like for me, for this point, my, before I took everything offline, cause I don't take any more customers. It was basically, they went to my website, they read everything they wanted to read. They booked right online. If they did not like it, they didn't have to. Um, I didn't answer the phone. There was no phone number available for them to call. If they wanted to contact me, there was a contact us form on my website and then it would fill in the information. And it flat out said like what our expectations were for a customer. And if they didn't reach them, I didn't respond to them because if we're Rhode Island cat grooming and you have a dog, I'm not going to respond to you because you're stupid. That's not my fault. You know, or if they said, I have a very matted, you know, Maine Coon mix. When's the next time you can come out? Then I can just email back to the booking and that, and my online booking did everything. That will make you way more money than a bather because payroll ultimately costs you a lot more. So if you're going to have a bather, how many dogs is she doing? How long is it going to take you to train that person? If it's a really good bather, my bathers were fantastic. My bathers could do at least two dogs an hour, at least. And these are like mid-range dogs, you know, nail clip, ear clean, pluck, glands, bath and blow dry, 30 minutes. But, you know, obviously our more wooly dogs, et cetera. But our lab prices were 55, 65. And that was without a D shed. With a D shed, we're talking realistically like 65 to $100 for a lab. And that's how long it would take. And that's where I had to pay my groomer or my bather. So you have to look at that again. So let's say for instance, for shits and giggles, and I wish this is, I'm gonna do this really quick guys, okay? Um, and then we got to go as I want to cut into Mary's. So in this instance, let's say this person normally does five dogs times $50. So this groomer is normally doing five, 10, 15, 20, 250, 250 a day. So let's say with a $10 hour of bather, they can now do eight. So eight times 50 equals 400. Right, so they went from 250 to 400. So that is a $150 increase. No, my math's off, right? No, 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 no. No, it's right, 250. So they're gonna make, nope, that's not right. See that? This is why I never do anything on the fly and rush. I was right, it's $150 increase, right? So at $150 increase. Now let's say to do that, they had to pay somebody $15 an hour. Um, in eight hours, right? So let's take that $15 an hour. Now let's times that by the eight hours. 
that's going to cost the groomer $120 to hire that person, not including, remember, we want to add in workers comp and this and that. So did that groomer actually make more money? No. You know, yes, they could groom three more dogs and they earned an extra $150. But in that instance, that bather cost them at $15 an hour eight, for eight hours, $120. So they're really only netting $30. But when you take into account someone calling out, um, so having to retrain somebody, somebody, you know, making mistakes or God forbid, they like something happens. You're not actually making a lot of money then. Now, if this bather in this time could do, you could then do, let's say an additional five dogs. Is that worth it? Well, let's do the math again. So instead of, um, let's say they do the three, the groomer can do an extra three groom dogs and then they're going to do two more bath dogs. And again, let's assume these bath dogs are, whoop, oh, well, well, sorry guys, I'm getting all excited. I'm going to rush through this. I'm sorry. So again, let's say that this bather is now going to be able to bathe all the dogs. So the groomer can now do three more groom dogs and they can do two more bath dogs. So the bather can do two bath dogs on top of that. That means they're bathing a, to a total of 10 dogs, which is not unreasonable in eight hours. And so let's, I mean, if a groom dog is $50, then how much is that bath dog? Is that bath dogs realistically like $35 if that groom is 50? So let's take that into account. So they added an additional 60 bucks. So they added 60 plus the 150. You're still only earning less than $100 more for all the headache of training an employee, making sure they show up in order for you to groom more dogs. And you're like, well, they can do bath dogs. Okay, well, then you have to charge. If you're paying someone $15 an hour, or even if you're charging, if you're paying them $10 an hour, you need to make 30. You need to be charging at least $30 an hour. So that's not bad, right? $30 an hour is not bad. Probably a little bit more, actually. Probably like 35 or 40, ideally, because you want to be able to make money on your back end. But when you're talking about bath dogs, you're not always going to make that money. You're not because you have call outs, you have people not showing up. There's all of these reasons for things to go wrong. So only in the best case scenario are you making your money back. And that's where we're finding these issues because your hope is that a bather, again, they tell you to hire a bather. The industry standard tells you to hire a bather to do more dogs. Doing more dogs is not always the answer. Sometimes it's just broken. You have to figure out, are you actually making money? Does your numbers work? And what is it that's slowing you down? Most of the time, it's not the amount of dogs you're doing that's a problem. It's that you take too long checking in customers. They're not retention customers. You're not being consistent with your pricing. I cannot tell you how many people I know charge 45 to 55 for a Shih Tzu and then 65 for a 70 pound doodle. I do not get it. You know, again, things like that, pricing inconsistency. So I just wanna end with this cause I know we are hitting our eight o'clock time. Thank you guys for being patient with me. I know my halo light's broken. We're just working on this, that these and among other things. So in this scenario, again, you know, in Hannah Mae, please don't feel like I'm taking, I'm making fun of you. I'm not at all because I think these are such great questions because they really do happen to so many people. In this scenario, this person has been told probably by other industry leaders to just hire a bather to make more money. And the truth is that nine times out of 10, your business model is not streamlined enough to make more money because a bather does not automatically make you more money. It really doesn't. Um, in this scenario, you can see this person actually adds way more time and liability because sure, she can groom now more dogs, but now she has to check the quality of every single dog. And she has to check in more dogs. We don't even add into account that because you really should not have your bather checking in and out your dogs. You really should not, especially if you're going to train them to be a groomer. You should be the one being the face of the business. You want them loyal to you. So I hope this helps, guys. I'm so sorry that things have been a little chaotic. I always enjoy being here, though. I really have a lot of fun with you guys. And if you have more questions, I would love to talk to you more. You know, hop on my calendar, um, reach out to me at Savvy Groomers Facebook, Finances for the Grooming Industry. I'm everywhere, baby. I'm everywhere. So 
Oop, I have to go through my, my spiel because we're at the end of the day, right? This is important. So this was this week's strategy for recovery. Stop carrying your business. And again, guys, don't do stuff that is going to make you work harder. Life is way too short. I want to invite you to join our Grow Wealthy Grooming membership for one l- monthly fee. You can join today as a foundation member. It is still only $10 a month. I am so excited right now. I just hired a membership consultant and she loves all of my ideas, but she's going to make it even better by making sure it's in a way that everyone can continue to learn, um, whether you're on the go in a mobile, in a shop, everywhere. We want to make it easier and more accessible to everyone. Whoop, as I'm like, la 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 la. Sorry, you guys know how I'm always working. Um, If you are looking to get your finances under control, I highly suggest that you sign up for our personal finance on a leash. As you can see, I played the background accidentally. No worries. It happens. Um, Too funny. But what I was meant to say is that personal finance on a leash teaches you how to get your finances under control and make them work for you. Now more than ever, there has never been a more important time for you to figure out how to best use your finances to make you live your dreams. You know, I would love to, you guys, I am now a Dave Ramsey financial business coach, which I am actually really, really excited about. I know it sounds really dorky. Um, I'm really excited to have the blessing of being one of his financial preferred coaches. Um, I really am. I'm really blessed and grateful and I worked really hard to do it. But so if you guys need help getting your budget together and looking at your finances, I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, I really suggest you join Personal Finance in a Leash before you really start paying me for business coaching, not business coaching, financial coaching, only because to teach you everything in the course would take, we literally do about 30 minutes to an hour's worth of content every week for 12 weeks. You know, that seems kind of silly to pay me to teach you instead of just going and doing the online course. That makes way more sense. But hey, I'm here for you either way. Anyway, guys, it is always awesome to see you. Thank you so much for being here. I hope I brought lots of value to you. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share. Please share to your friends. You know, it's really important to me that we help the grooming industry. Because like I said, a lot of the things that we're told to do don't actually help. And, you know, again, it's this is why you hire a business coach. A business coach is there to help you work out problems like that. You know, like Hannah Mae, you know, if you added a bather, you may or may not make more money. You may actually increase your liability, increase your stress, and not actually net any extra profit. Wow. You know, and that's what business coaches are for, or to look through your personal situation to figure out, yes, this is a wise decision, or you know what, I would do this, but only after this. Or, hey, let's think outside the box together to figure out how We can increase your profits in a way that actually fits what you want for your dream life. So, you know, I like that. That's, that's my fun. That's my favorite thing to do. And if you guys want to ever pursue that, hop on my calendar and let's have a call. All right, guys, as always, happy grooming.